me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman. What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now today we will take a look at the Joker from DC vs. Vampires. Now this is a Walmart exclusive. You want to find him, you got to go out there and hunt. Now I did have some worm online telling me that because I get so many gold labels that maybe I don't have a life and all I do is go to all the Walmarts every day. Now this is far from the truth. If you know me, you know that I actually work a lot of hours. I work out a lot. I take care of my own personal stuff. And then at the same time, I find time to make you guys these review videos free of charge. So basically this guy has no idea what he's talking about. And I even find time in my day, even if I'm tired, even if I don't feel like doing it. And I might stop at a Walmart just randomly and see what I find. And that's what you have to do when you hunt is because hunting can become very repetitive and it's really sad when you have to do the walk of shame when you, <laughs> when you didn't find anything. But when you do find stuff, it is very, very awesome. Now, I don't know much about DC versus vampires, but I'm always up to get some cool monster, ghost, vampire stuff in the collection so this guy does look pretty unpredictable in the packaging but let's go ahead and take a closer look at it but first he does come with your standard black dc multiverse stand now of course these are not really needed but sometimes they do come in useful he also comes with his data file card on the front you do have some source material from the comics Pretty nice representation of vampirized Joker. And on the back, you do have some information. Now, as I said before, not too familiar with the storyline, DC versus vampires, but I'm always really excited to get some cool monster versions of characters in the collection. Now, it is pretty interesting that McFarlane was able to get this guy into Walmart because he does have some pretty prominent looking blood stains. And if you think about the Vampire Batman that was also a Walmart exclusive, that one had blood on him, but it was kind of, you know, blended in with his regular color. So it, it, since you couldn't really see it, it didn't stick out as much. But if you pass this guy in the aisles, you do see that he is pretty bloodied up and he has that crazy vampiric look in his eyes. So pretty interesting now he did come with one accessory and that of course is his traditional mallet now this one does have the same design i think dc universe classics also gave you one like this uh, i don't know if it goes back into older figures it just might but it is like the the nose is the handle kind of kind of looks like um sort of a pinocchio styled head but this one is sculpted out really nice and it has a lot of detail which is pretty much on par with McFarlane's sculpt work but always happy to add a new weapon to the Joker arsenal now let's go ahead and take a closer look at him first impressions that head <laughs> is just really some nightmare feel I mean it, it's a horrible looking head sculpt not in a bad way you do have a lot of detail in there and it fits in with the suit the colors that they chose have like a kind of mm, I want to say like night you know feel to them like a neon or something like that that kind of like lime green undershirt and accents is really nice just the whole setup it is a, a simple repaint but it looks really really good together and if you look at the head scope they did a really nice job and what i've been noticing a lot is the bodies might not have a lot of paint but the head scopes are actually getting more paint from McFarlane. This one has a lot of cool tones, shadowing. You can see all the wrinkles. They did something with the way the mouth, the, the smile of the mouth is kind of like cut out and it goes all the way almost towards the ears. But it is a bloodied up version. Of course, you have his vampire fangs in there. 
and the eyes have something like you know they <laughs> just those like crazy eyes it looks uh, pretty insane and the hair is another nicely sculpted part of this kind of feathered and <laughs> looks pretty uh vidal sassoon style all in all an awesome looking head sculpt for a, a vampiric joker take a look at the articulation he can look down really well now looking up is going to be a problem because mostly of the hair but i also think that the head sits kind of low on the body so i am going to be looking at putting a longer peg or or modding the peg like extending the peg that way it'll raise his head up just those little millimeters and it should make a big difference now you do got right to left and you can tilt his head for some evilness pretty awesome all in all really happy with this figure let's take a look at the suit body pretty much your traditional joker suit uh repainted used body parts i'm pretty sure but you do have all the suit details the buttons the pockets all the cool little wrinkles and stuff in there and then moving down into the slacks another reused part but it does fit well with the tone of purple that they put in this figure it looks really good let's take a look at the shoulders now deep inside there you can actually see that he does have that like bushing ring that is in the shoulder inside the socket but the suit also like moves with the shoulder so that's another cool little figure design that helps the shoulder movement you do have up and down front to back bicep swivel double jointed elbows they look actually really nice straighten them out moving down the suit awesome detail in the suit going down to the cuffs and then you have that same matching kind of neon green that's used in the undershirt so kind of you got kind of that contrast which makes it pop a little bit and then you do have like a bloodied up grasping claw hand and of course he does have wrist articulation traditional ball joint from mcfarland on these wrists but they're actually hidden really nicely and they blend in really well with the figure on the other side same thing but you do have an open kind of scratching hand or, or like attacking bloody hand and like i said it is pretty cool that you got this bloodied up figure sitting in walmart shelves that's kind of awesome to me you can get them pretty easily in a t-pose uh not too much more than that but that's fine you can move his arms above his head now they're kind of splayed out but you can use the articulation to put his arms right behind his head this might be useful if you use it with the hammer, you know, so like he's ready to strike down with the hammer. So pretty cool range and articulation there. Moving down to the lower body, let's look at the thighs. Uh, pretty okay thigh swivel, not too much. You can heat these up to get a little bit more movement out of them, but it does help you to move the foot from left to right without having any thigh cuts and breaking up the sculpt can kick up pretty nicely kick back as well and when you do this do not be afraid to move the rubber in the trunks because that is what they are designed for to give you more range and movement and when you put them back down they go back to their original form put out his knee he does have that sweet mcfarland hip swivel double jointed knees look pretty clean straighten them out um the up and down at the foot is a little bit restricted but you have some there you got right to left rocker and of course toe articulation now before we go let's take a look at the lower body now one thing they did do pretty well in this figure is on some of the other joker figures the knees and the pins were kind of off color from the suit pants and on this one, they actually got it pretty close, almost perfectly matching the two plastics. That way it doesn't have that, you know, like off color. They just really didn't look well on the other Joker figures. And then down at the feet, you have the spats. Pretty nicely sculpted out and painted. Traditional Joker footwear. 
Take a look at them from the bottom, no tread and no identifying marks. Moving up the back, nice scope work, going into the back of the jacket, which is also nicely detailed, and then the back of the head. Get some cool sinister vibes looking at them from the back like this. All in all, pretty happy with this figure. I mean, I gotta say something and that is that sometimes simplicity and doing things just simply kind of really work out to your benefit. So this guy, even though he is just a repainted figure with a different head and different hands, he actually works really, really well. Now I do wanna extend the peg. So we will pop this head off and put another peg in there. Now, what this does, if you look at him side by side, is his head was sitting kind of low on, on his body, so it was covering up a lot of the neck. And when I think of Joker a lot of times, I imagine him like with a long neck, you know, like he's like a lean, like wiry figure. And when you extend the peg, if you look at this one, you could actually see the Adam's apple and it exposes a little bit more of the neck and it raises it up a little bit. So it gives him a little bit more height but the best part is you have more articulation. So the head's more free moving. It's not so restricted when it's crunched, like when it's crunched down onto the shoulders. And then now he can look up actually a little bit more, which gives him more range and posability and you could do more things with him. Just because you raise up that peg, it allows you to look up a little bit more. So it's pretty cool. Now, another thing I wanted to do, and this actually worked out perfectly, is I wanted to bloody up his hammer. There's just something about it that I thought would work out, and it actually worked out really well. And I wanted to do kind of like a splatter, some gobs of, of blood, like, you know, like he hit people and it was like, you know, spraying. And then I wanted to bloody up the, the actual handle and it all came together really nicely. And it actually adds something like a little bit of spice to this figure. Now, when you put it in his hand and have him posing with it, it just gives a little bit more effect and feel now that his weapon also is really bloodied up. So I'm actually really happy the way this came out. And as I said, now when you pose him with that hammer, it just gives it a little bit more oomph and all the whole package all together just fits well together a lot better and he's gonna look awesome up on the shelf now before we go let's take out some other creepy looking jokers you have the criminal joker from the three jokers this is basically the suit body and everything for this joker it's just a repaint but this guy does <laughs> have that like deadpan face and he has his own vibe you know like don't mess with me vibe then I think, what is this guy, the Death in the Family or something like that? But I added my own bloody axe to him. And the thing about this guy is the head sculpt. that's just awesome. Another grotesque detail head from McFarlane. Pretty, pretty grisly. And then one of my favorite customs, which is basically my serial killer Joker, which I made from an Arkham body and the head from the Last Night on Earth lantern and there's just something about that guy that he just <laughs> looks really evil and and like he'll like that that's why i usually put blades in his hand because he's more like of a of a knife joker like not so much guns he's just a eerie version of the joker my serial killer joker pretty cool and then let's show off the other vampire figure that we received which is the Vampire Batman, which was also a Walmart exclusive. Now, I would be happy to get any other vampire versions that McFarlane wants to give us. We could have like a little set of like maybe five or six different versions of vampiric figures. But this guy's going to look really awesome up on the shelf, especially now with his bloody mallet. It all came together really nicely. But you guys keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing and I will see you on the next one.